Thank you, President Zelensky and all the representatives of Ukraine's government uh, for the opportunity to participate in today's summit. To the Ukrainian people, I know it's a day early, but on behalf of all Americans, happy Independence Day. Respect for Ukraine's independence is at the core of the Crimea platform, as is the principle that every nation's sovereignty and territorial integrity must be respected, and no country should be able to redraw another's borders by force. These principles are also at the heart of the United Nations Charter and the broader rules-based international order, which has underwritten decades of greater peace and prosperity for people around the globe. When that order is undermined anywhere, it's a threat to people everywhere. And governments willing to flout these principles in one place rarely stop there. That's what Russia's actions in Ukraine teach us. Indeed, in Crimea, we see the blueprint for much of President Putin's full-scale invasion of Ukraine on February 24th. We see it in the unelected puppets that the Kremlin is installing in Ukrainian cities it seizes to try to impose Moscow's policies, just like it did in Crimea. We see it in the sham referenda the Kremlin is organizing in regions it controls to try to legitimize its occupation, just like it did in Crimea. And we see it in the atrocities and repression by Russian forces in the territories that they besiege and control, like the extrajudicial executions, forced disappearances, torture, rape, and filtration operations that the world witnessed in Bucha and Irpin, some of which we saw and still see being perpetrated by Russian forces in Crimea. This last point is crucial. The installment of proxies and sham referenda may be in Crimea's past, but human rights abuses are an everyday reality in Crimea's present, such as the more than 40 prosecutions in Crimea documented by the United Nations between February and May of this year, targeting people who criticized the Kremlin's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. One of those found guilty was a 70-year-old woman. Her crime was carrying flowers and a handmade sign that said, no to war, to a monument of the famous Ukrainian poet, Tarus Shevchenko. And such as the unrelenting crackdown of Crimea's minority ethnic and religious groups, like the recent sentencing of Crimean Tatar human rights activist Riza Isakov to 19 years in prison. All are reasons why this summit and the Crimea platform are so important. We must continue to insist that Crimea is Ukraine, just as Donetsk and Luhansk are Ukraine, just as every other part of the country is Ukraine. That was our position in 2014. It's our position in 2022. We must keep raising the costs and international pressure on President Putin and his enablers until the rights of the Ukrainian people and their sovereign country are respected. And we must continue to provide humanitarian, security, and diplomatic support for Ukrainians bravely defending their rights, as the United States has done and will continue to do. Not only for the people of Ukraine, but because when we stand up for these principles, rather than stand by, we help make people of all nations safer and more secure. Thank you.